book lover or enthusiast? Do you need genuine and unique lifestyle products? Or are you looking for a place where you can find contemporary and a wide range of unique gifts for children and adults? Laterna is your go-to place for genuine and contemporary books and lifestyle products for wholesale and retail customers. We stock business books on management, leadership, financial success, entrepreneurship, personal development, and so much more. We carry children's fiction, non-fiction, educational books, CDs, and DVDs. We also stock Christian books on various themes, such as family life and parenting, church life and growth, spirit-filled living, love, sex, and marriage, to mention but a few. Laterna carries life and style books, such as baby and child care, beauty and style, conception and pregnancy, crafts, and hobbies. We also carry adult, children, and teenagers Bibles, educational toys, framed art, gifts, greeting cards, home and office fragrances, music CDs and DVDs, stationery, teachings, and lots more. Our stores are located at 12B and 13 Oahu Street, Victoria Island, Lagos. You can also shop online at www.laternabooks.com. Laterna, your lifestyle hub for book lovers. For inquiries, call 0803-301-4462-0906-0002046 or 7. Chat with us via WhatsApp on 0803-301-4462. You may also reach us on social media via Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Latana Books and Latana Ventures. Today is um, Children's Day. It's also a day when we'll be introducing um, an author who, who's, who had gifts that was nurtured right from the time he was a child. But before the moderator, Mr. Kunle Kasmus, talks about him, I'll briefly introduce Latana Ventures. Latana is a leading literature and lifestyle products distribution and marketing organization in Nigeria. We have a strong focus on customer satisfaction. And we've gone from selling Bibles, being a source for Bibles, business books, Christian books, children's books, educational toys, gift items, gift bags, wraps, home and office fragrances, music CDs, DVDs, teachings, stationery and currently and journals. Um, Established in 1996, we've been in the forefront of educating Nigerians through provision of global best-selling books with over access to over 100,000 titles and several other products. We supply most of the states in Nigeria. We currently run a children's book club, which takes place every last Saturday of the month. But as part of our initiative to encourage the reading culture in Nigeria, we initiated and started the adult book club, virtual book club in July last year during the pandemic. And we believe that 
since Latana is a lifestyle hub for book lovers and also an entrepreneur, that we would be able to have an impact on our society, community, and change the values. In the last um, 11 months, when we started, we've covered so many areas. We've had Wono Adetayo, who spoke on four disciplines of executions. We also had Abiram on eat this and leave. So we covered on health, parenting, and Kwerapu, five love languages of children, and Lamide Balogu Daniel's plan. So if this is your first time listening to the book club, please, you could always go on to latanaventures.com on, on YouTube and you have access to all the 22 sessions. Today's the 22 sessions and currently we hold the book club twice a month. The first, the second week, second Thursday of the month is on leadership and business. Well, um, we hold the last Thursday of the month, we hold one on parenting, autobiographies, biography, life and styles and various other things. Today we'll be having a uh, someone who will be talking about his life, Sunday Odyssey. But just before I hand over to Mr. Kunle Kasumu, who's the moderator of today, is also the presenter of Channel's Book Club, is, has a passion for books. Um, we'll play our suggested books, Latana suggested books, and then Mr. Kasumu would then um, introduce Sunday Odyssey. I'm very delighted, very excited to have my very special friend, um, Sunday Olise here today. Sunday is a fantastic guy. We all know him as a great footballer and he was a great footballer, one of the greatest footballers ever produced in Nigeria. He was, I mean, a, a, an extremely talented midfielder, an extraordinary midfielder technically gifted, physically strong, very skillful. I remember those wonderful days he gave us during his playing days. He was not just a player, he was a key figure in the Super Eagles and captain of the Super Eagles and then later on became a coach of the Super Eagles. So when the history of Nigerian football is written, there is no way that this gentleman will not be featured prominently. Um, so, great footballer, played for some of the greatest clubs in the world, um, Juventus FC, Ajax FC, Dortmund, and a host of others. So, he's known all over the world, celebrated all, all over the world, and he's perhaps, um, perhaps most famous for that goal in the 1998 World Cup, that, that strike um, that sent... Um, um, Zubi Zaleta, I don't know if I pronounce his name well, <laughs> of Spain, in the scrambling, but most of that goal um, that gave the Super Eagles of Nigeria victory in that very famous match. So it's a pleasure to have Sunday Olise here. But beyond football, I've come to know Sunday as a man, Sunday the man. And I can tell you for sure he's principled, he's honest, he's direct. Um, and he's very, very cerebral. Um, we've had many sports fans in this, uh, sports stars in Nigeria, boxing, athletics, football, 
um, many areas of sports, but none has given us an autobiography like what um, Sunday has given us now. Um, I keep challenging people around me. I'm, into, I'm very much into books. I have not yet seen an autobiography written by a, a sports star in Nigeria, the way Sunday has written his own. I've not yet seen it. So I'm asking everybody here, if you have seen one, please let me know and uh, let me correct myself. But I think this is the first of its kind autobiography by a sports star in Nigeria, a football star. It's a great book. Uh, it's just a wonderful book to read. It's excellent. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to welcome Sunday Olise. Sunday, nice to have you here. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. <laughs> great, great, great. So um, the way this goes is um, we will we will have 15 minutes where Sunday will lead us into his book. Um, it, it's he he will say anything he feels like saying about the book. Um, provides us some insight, some teasers, or what inspired it, what the book is about, and all that. Then after 15 minutes. Then um, I will ask Sunday a few questions and then open the floor for the rest of us who might have questions. In the meantime, you can post your questions in the chat room. So we've got two options. Either I read the question from the chat room or you could raise your hand up later on to ask your question. So, but for now, um, Sunday will say, great to have you here. You have the floor. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, uh, Mola Kunle for all the nice things you just said. Well, like, like, like Kunle rightfully said, I also discovered him as a human being, Kunle, and um, I'm proud to say he's a, he's a good friend of mine. I really enjoyed talking to him and uh, he's been a lot of help, especially in this particular journey of my lifetime. And also as, as we mix and when we share thoughts about life in general. So I'm proud to call him a friend. Mm -hmm. um, this, the book, and everybody who's on there, good afternoon. The book is entitled The Audacity to Refuse. I will eventually explain why that title. Um, it, it practically covers um, my life, especially um, as regards my professional life. It covers 16 years of professional football. I uh, was really, in fact, I am blessed by God to have been able to survive the warfare called professional football for 16 years. And um, I really feel exceptionally blessed to have been able to be a, an integral member of the Super Eagles uh, for a total of 10 years uh, uninterrupted. Um, not even once by injury or something. Sometimes we've had some shakes from illnesses, but whatever, but I've been able to survive them thanks to God's support. The book covers my childhood. It covers the genesis of my career. It covers um, the, the start from as a kid. And it covers also how I was able to go through life as a young man as a very poor man, like most of us are, when growing up in Africa. Um, um, what, what I just also saw with the, uh, wrote with the book was that I tried to share my childhood, the difficulties I had as a child, the great times I had as a child. I tried to share them also with everyone. I tried also on the book also to like explain the stages I went through, the challenges I went through as a as a professional soccer player, and especially how God, I believe to date, chose me to be um, to be what He made He has made me to be. Because um, when you go through the book, you will see that what I eventually became as a human being, all through each steps of the way, uh, you will see how. There has been some divine interference in it, and it was consistent. It's not something as if that was happening once in a while that is okay, maybe I was just lucky. It has been too consistent in my lifetime for me to ignore the reality and the fact that God has been present in my life. 
The book also explains also the challenges that especially a colored man will feel when you are abroad. Uh, I will share with you, I was practically a kid when I went to Europe. In fact, the first time I went to Belgium as a professional soccer player was the first time I left the shores of Nigeria. <laughs> It was the first time I, I, we got on a plane to fly out of Nigeria. So um, it covers that also. Most importantly, the aim of the book, that what I tried to what I have tried to do is to share and to give back to the society and, and also to the human race what life has given me. Um, I, I have tried to put by this book at the disposition of the reader, um, the challenges, the difficulties, the good parts, the successes I have had, and also the failures that I had, why I failed, and what I could have done better, how I could have handled some of them better. Um, and it also, for the Nigerian level, um, the Nigerian football itself and its greatest generation, which is the generation I was blessed to be part of, there is nothing really that has been documented from us from the inside. And what has been documented has really been um, things that have happened, written by people that are outsiders, that are not members of the group, um, and what they think happened. But um, with this book, you get to see and you get to read exactly how it happened exactly what made us um, what we became, exactly why we succeeded when we did, exactly why the Super Eagles generation of, of the 90s, especially the 1994, 96, 98 era, exactly why as of today, it's been so difficult for our nation to reproduce a team like that. And also you get to see why also, in fact, how Africa, has had a problem to produce a team like that because we are considered outside Africa as probably the most, um, how will I put it, not to make Nigerians look as if we are sounding too arrogant, but let's just say it like it is. How, how, that team is considered to be the greatest team to have come out of Africa as regards um, position for position, as regards spectacular play, as regards um, uh, the way we're able to transition from defense to attack, as we got pace, physical, and as we got the spirit in the team, um, the others are put in the, in the in the book of it. I also have tried to clarify a lot of myths that have been put all over the greatest team ever Nigeria has produced. A lot of negative things have been said about, and unfortunate things have been said about great legends like Rashidi Yakini, even about Stephen Keshi even about myself, even about um, the Westerhoffs and all that. So with this book, you get to see it, how it was done. This year is 25 years since Nigeria, in fact, is the silver jubilee of Nigeria's greatest sporting achievement, which was the team conquest of the Olympics football gold at the Olympics. This book is set out to coincide with it, not only really because I wanted it to do, but also because COVID pushed us to it. So it's somehow kind of like the destiny, destiny of it. Um, so um, that was how this book was born. The book explains practically how we won the Olympics. If you go through, through, go through the book, you will see how the preparations were, were done. You will get to see how each stage um, uh, how each stage was carried out. You get to see the personalities. You get to see some people that Nigerians don't even know of today, but we are very instrumental to Nigeria when the Olympics go. One of them is Teslim Patusi. Some people might say, who is that? But if you follow our preparations, all through the preparations, if Teslim had not been there, our striking force would never have been that potent as it was. Not because he was playing, because he was pressurizing everybody who was playing. Um, uh, as it was. Um, I'm very grateful to Cecilia, who has just put uh, on, 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 on the group, one of the quotations of the group, of the book, 
where she met, she um, explained exactly one of the things that I tried to put in the book. What I tried to put in the book also is just to share with the reader, try to put you in my place, try to put you in our place. You get to see um, the step-by-step -step deliberations. You get to see how God, and you, uh, how God plays and played an unbelievable important role in, in my being. Um, I agree that, of course, I, I worked very hard. I made sacrifices. I tried to, I was too, somehow sometimes too uh, demanding from myself. And one of, one of the weaknesses I found out is that I'm too demanding on myself and I'm expecting the same kind of level from somebody else. And sometimes it, it backfires because the other person is not taking the same sacrifices like you are. Um, but I did all that. But if I had not had the Midas touch from God on it, it would not have really been what it, what it became. Because if you look at the goal I scored against Spain, it's what the whole world knows about. But you will be surprised to know that I scored even a better goal when I was playing at Ajax or at FC Cologne. But because it was not on center stage, nobody's talking about it. So for God to have made me do that in the, at the World Cup, it's because he wanted me to be remembered. And the one part of the book also is that I'm trying to share with people is that no matter what you do in life, if you don't believe in God, you're not gonna make it that well. You will think you're making it, but you will not make it that well. And it's just gonna be like segmented. Um, football does not exist in isolation. Football exists in life. And the story of my book, I'm practically discussing life, but just a section of life that happens to be sports and football. The interactions that we that I had or that we had as human beings, be it the dream fallouts, be it the dressing room joys, be it the, it's really what you also in your private life live and experience. But only you experience it in another section of life. Um, so for that reason, I think the lessons that this book has. Um, has shown us, um, it, the lessons it shows us is that what I have experienced in my life, I give it to you. Look at it. If you can use it, use it. If you can just use it to understand better, I would be very happy. If one person can say yes, from this book, I was able to use, take a part of it and make my life better then the essence of the book has been fulfilled. Then I'm more than grateful because the essence of it is that we shouldn't go through life and everything we experience, take it with us to the grave, especially at a time like this. I believe that um, we should go through life, our experiences have it and pass it on. Pass it on to the people who are coming after us. And one thing that I will explain because I know people will ask me, why did you name the book The Audacity to Refuse? When you go through the book, one thing you will see is that in every part of my life, I have always faced limitations. Somebody telling you you can't do this. Somebody telling you you can't be this far. Somebody telling you you are made to be at this limit. You shouldn't aim to be that high. You shouldn't aim to be there because you are a minority, because you are this. And when I mean minority, I don't just mean only tribally. I'm talking about globally now. As a colored man, everywhere we go to, we are looked upon as minorities. So the essence of this book is that when you go, when I came to Europe, I noticed it from day one. That at times, some at times some were wicked enough to tell it to us at our face that as a colored man, you should be seen and not heard. Um, as a kid, then as a young youngster in Europe, initially, we couldn't say something. We had to like accept it. But the moment God blessed us and we found out that it became so obvious that when we were not in the team, the team crumbled. 
then we stop accepting it. The limitations has to stop. And we've been so blessed that not only we refuse these limitations, but God will then bless us with successes that will force them to accept those limitations. And that's, um, and all this I've tried to put in the book and I try to share with it. So in the book, you get a package. The book has 20 chapters. You get a package of the fact of my youth growing up in the streets of, it starts from, uh, from Delta State. I am, I am an origin of the, of the uh, Ndokwa local government area. That's with Bede and all that. That's where we come from, Agbo. That's where my parents are from. How the childhood started from there and how we're able to come into the concrete jungle we now call Lagos <laughs> um, and be able to survive there and how God has been so great to me to take me from an unknown human being in Nigeria to probably at one point, one of the most important players in my country of now 200 million people. Better than this, I don't know what God could have done. So the best way I can do is give it back. Mr. Kunle, I've tried to fill up 15 minutes. So I think it's my turn to give it back to you. I hope I've, <laughs> I've eclaired it a bit more on the book. You've been, you've been fantastic, Sunday. You've been very fantastic. Well, well done. I, I know there's a lot um, for all of us out there who have not read the book. Um, I mean, trust me when I say it's a book to read. It's a book to read. Sunday, let me throw two questions at you. One of the two questions is very unfair. It's an unfair question. Um, you know, I know this book has many messages, many themes, many dimensions and all that, you know, so asking you to say what you consider as the most important message of this book, I know can be a bit unfair considering, mm. considering all the important messages in there. So if I were to box you in a corner, what, what would you say? Okay, if you read this book and you take nothing from it, take this. You know, this is my primary thrust. This is the primary thrust of this book. What, what, what will that be? Hmm. Only I can see you experience in this job because <laughs> you, you've summed up. Um, personally, if I was to like put it all together, I think I will look at it. I might say, you have one life to live. We know there is life after this because Jesus Christ told us so. There's life after this. But at the moment, we have one life to live now. And um, what we should try to do is try to live life on our own terms. And that is to refuse the limitations that the world will try to put on you. Uh, life is full of limitations, and um, I was when I was reading. I was reading books when I, my my son was born, so I was reading books also to know how to be a good father. I wanted to be the best, so there's nothing else to go past me. And one of the things that I learned from the book was that, in as much as we love our our sons, our sons are not our properties. At one point, they also have to live their own lives. But the best way also to make our sons and our, our kids, sorry, I'm using the son because my first child is a son. And my, my daughter came afterwards. If she sees this video, she'll get angry. You're putting, yeah. my, you're putting my brother in front of me all the time. <laughs> so, uh, well, what I learned from it is that we keep telling our children, no, no, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, because we don't want them to get hurt. But what, one of the things this book taught me was that by telling them, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, we are telling them you cannot handle the challenge. So don't do it. But on the other hand, by telling them, okay, you want to do this, okay, you can do it, but this is how you have to go about it. So handle it this way. At least we're giving them the advice, let them try to handle it. Because um, we were born alone and we'll die alone. But at the same time also, uh, 
if we have Jesus Christ and we have God in our lives, we have to work really hard because it's a world full of competition and limitations. So what this book I think will give to you now is that I am trying to say to you, refuse limitations, dream, go for it, work hard. You will face challenges like I did, but follow them, try to do them if possible, like I did, which was one, I will face it head on. I will work hard. I will accept criticism, even if not publicly, but I will do everything possible to make sure that I don't accept the limitation that the world is trying to put on me. I think that is probably best how I can put it. Yes, and that and that shows up um, in your book. Um, I remember somewhere where in, initially when you got to Belgium, and uh, your first coach was um, was problematic. <laughs> 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 Mr. Wasage. <laughs> because, because, because of your skin color, you know, and that was quite challenging. And then I also remember where you were being discouraged when you were called to go and play for the Super Eagles. You were being discouraged yeah. to go, yeah. you know, but you refused and you went nevertheless, you know, and that launched your international career and so many, 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 many other examples there. Now, um, my second question is, um, I'll ask two more before I open the floor. My second question is, as a form of providing teasers, you know, to people who are still wondering whether they should, you know, dig into the book or not. Um, <laughs> what, what, can you share with us five things about yourself that most people don't know about you that you revealed in this book? Five things that will be very simple things. For example, now, one thing I didn't know about you for a long time until you told me was that you speak seven languages. Yeah. Seven languages, including German, including French, including Italian, including Yoruba. You speak Yoruba very well, you know, and all that. So can you reveal to us five things that most people don't know about you that they might find a bit surprising revealed in this book? One of the first things is that uh, in this book, you for the very first time, people get to see the picture of my son, my daughter, and my wife. <laughs> I have cherished my privacy all my life because I felt that they shouldn't suffer for my own success. So, um, I have always kept them out of the limelight. But in this book, because the book I dedicated to three of them, they have made life wonderful for me. So they are pictures in it. In this book also, I believe people will finally find out that um, uh, that I was a very poor kid. I was a very poor kid. I know most people grew up being poor, but at one time we didn't even have a television. So, so we were really, really poor. So you can see it from the book. Um, also from the book also, you will get to see also what people might find out is that the sad, one of the saddest moments of my life was when I served my country. One of the most trying moments of my life was when I served my country and the challenges that, was, that, I, that I faced while serving the country. The fourth one that I could bring in there is that from this book, I believe people will find out eventually that it was not all that glamorous while I was playing for all the top clubs in the world. It was not as what they saw from the outside, you shooting, scoring, defending, fighting. Sometimes in the dressing rooms, we have to stand our ground and say, no, we, although we're Africans, we will not accept this. You know, um, and I, maybe the fifth part will be is that from the book, I believe, although most Nigerians know it, I, be, I believe it becomes very, very clear that I owe everything to Nigeria and I've, I will always die loving my country. Some don't understand why, but in the book, they will understand why. Because Nigeria gave me every tool to become what I've what I become. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I believe that, that, book, that book is in it. Fantastic, fantastic, wow. Um, okay, finally, or from my part, because of time, um, um, one of the things your book reveals, one of, the, one of the things that this book and the project of producing it, and you've mm -hmm. even been here, and so far, the few minutes we've had talking, you know, is for somebody who didn't know before, is that you are very, very cerebral. Now, people have this... Um, <laughs> Yeah, people have this impression about footballers as being, you know, perhaps mentally dull, but physically, physically fantastic, you know, and brilliant in a football sense, you know, being able to manipulate the ball. But beyond that, um, nothing much beyond that. But your book reveals that you were and you are still a big reader. Even in camp, you were reading. Even uh, during the 1994 World uh, um, uh, Nations Cup, your roommate was JJ Okocha. <laughs> While JJ will go out to have fun, you will stay indoors reading your book, <laughs> you know, and, and so on. So uh, uh, um, what is it about that? What, what led to that? Even when you wanted to start, start football, you actually wanted to be the Shegwon Degbami um, type of footballer who was both both fantastic on the field and also academically um, yeah so what's the, what's that about you well it's kind of like um i think it has a lot to do with curiosity i'm i'm a very curious person i i i believe a lot that um, um by reading you take somebody else's experience and you use it and you learn from somebody else. Um, and reading is like being told a story. If you're reading a, a book like about economics, like the introduction to economics, you find out that um, you are taking knowledge and it's making life easier for you. Because I, I believe knowledge is power. The moment you know something, you don't scare too much. It's like some people are scared of guns, but a man who has the knowledge of how to manipulate a gun, he's not scared of it because he knows that I have to turn it, I have to do this, I have to set it up, I have to do that. Um, so I think that is how uh, it is. Reading has been key to my life because it gives me an edge, kind of, with all due respect. Um, because when you've read of how to handle, for example, if you read how to handle a racist and you really, really read it well, when you see a racist, he will do all he wants. Well, at the end of the day, you will manipulate him. And he will be the one that will look stupid at the end of the day. Sometimes I also learned through reading. I, le I, re I read one book I can share with you. Uh, mm -hmm. The book says, it's the power of anger. When you pretend to people sometimes that you are angry, they leave you alone. <laughs> so if you, are in a, if you really want peace, um, there are certain situations whereby you have to pretend to be angry. And I use that technique with my players as a coach. <laughs> Sometimes we are leading 3-0 and I come in the dressing room and I pretend to be angry. What are we doing today? Is it because we are leading, we are doing nothing. But inside out, thank you, oh God, three points. But you're getting <laughs> angry because I know if I come and happy, they will let go. We might receive 3-1, 3-2, 3-3. Three, 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 and, no, and then the players will be like, oh, it's 3-0, coach is not happy. They will give it all. We end up the day 5 0. And, you know, yeah. but it's, I think reading helps. It helps. It helps a lot. Yeah, great, great. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, let's, if you have a question out there, please indicate by raising up your hand. I'll look for you. Um, the challenge with this program all the time is not. We know we always battle with time, but it's lunch hour, so it's understandable. Okay, so somebody has posted a question there while I look for others. Um, yeah, what's the question I just saw now? Just excuse me, I just saw a question. I was, can Mr. Olise kindly tell us about his academic background and the influence his parents had with regards to his success in life? Well, one other revelation of the book is my parents. Um, I owe them everything. 
and especially my grandfather, who I had a very, very tight relationship with. Um, education, I got from Ajawa State High School, and Tony Village at the secondary school level. I uh, went to primary school in, in, in Ojota. Um, and I owe a lot to a certain lady who just passed away. Her name is Vera Tom Egbe, my principal. She was an half caste, she, she, a white woman, but extremely straight. At the time, we thought she was extremely straight. But, but all I feel was that she is probably one of the reasons why educationally we stood right. She put us right from the beginning. What we have to do, the importance of never coming late, the importance of always um, trying to be best in class. She was very, very strict with us. And that's the importance of dressing well. You know, you have to always tuck in your shirt, all those kind of things. You know, all those things helped me. And the education itself, um, my parents were always insisting that we had to take school seriously. But the most important education I think my parents put into me was church going. Every Sunday, my father took us to church. And there we got the education of the Bible because it was great to us. And the Bible kind of like helped us to structure what was right and what was wrong. Mm, fantastic. Great. Um, Dabo Oluwo is asking, how will you advise my son who wants to play football, but I still want him to have his academics handy? Well, if your son wants to play football, um, I think you should encourage him because should he succeed and if he's able to uh, succeed in football, he has a ready-made job in the, the best job in the world. Why is football the best job in the world? It is your hobby and you get paid for it. Most people go to jobs they don't like, but they must do it because they get paid at the end of the month. For this one, you'll be waking up every morning to go to training to play football, to have fun. And at the end of the month, somebody will pay you for it. But I think it is in, in the interest, as a parent, I can advise you as a parent, you must insist on him being educated. Because the education he has, it's what that will make him be able to handle all surrounds football and what will make him, because education will teach him not what to, uh, not, uh, what to think, but how to think. And, and I think um, for that reason, it is important to insist that your child does both. It's difficult, but like I, like I found out, it's very, very difficult, but it's very important. Mm. Mm. Well, I happen to come, this question is from Uche. Um, I happen to come from the same tribe as Mr. Sondoli said. I want to know if the chance of managing the super eagles presents itself again, hmm. would you take that opportunity? Yeah, um, the thing that is, um, I think, uh, I think one has to learn also in life is that some people fear being different. They fear it because they want to be like everybody else. Um, but like my grandfather taught us, only a stupid man, it's in the book also, but I'll share it, only a stupid man is hated by everybody. And only a very stupid man is, a very, very stupid man is loved by everybody. But what you should strive for, everybody has to respect you because you stand for a certain something, because you believe in your principles and you stand by it. Um, I have heard some people ask me, hey, don't you think you're controversial because you want to be different? No, if I'm here today, it's because I'm trying to be different. <laughs> If, and if, if it's because I believe that, okay, instead of following, when somebody says, okay, here is 10 naira, uh, but I will give you two, let me keep eight. And I said, no, no, you know what? Leave me away from it. Ah, you're, you think you're special. You think you don't want to. No, no, no. I am afraid of what the consequence of that two naira I'm taking from you will bring me afterwards. Mm -hmm. The trouble is to bring me afterwards. So I refuse it. I refuse. Okay, then you can't be part of the group. You want to be different. No, okay. You go, I go my way. It's something like that. At the end of the day, you get to look at everybody in your face, and then you you get by, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. 
Now, here's a question for you. You left Super Eagles coaching job and another club abroad in very controversial circumstances. <laughs> Do you consider yourself to be controversial? <laughs> Oh, that's not exactly what I was just about to say. <laughs> this is very, very nice. Um, I am so glad you asked this question. Or all I can say is, please have a look at the book. <laughs> because if you read the book, you will get to see how the super goes, how we handle it. Uh, uh, I believe when I coach super goes, I coach super goes for eight months. I will share it today. Maybe you, you, you're not aware about this. For eight months. In those eight months, we played 14 games. We lost one friendly and one official game with the champ. So there were exceptional results. But while I was coaching the Super Eagles, for four months, I was unpaid. My assistant was unpaid for six months. The players did not have equipment to train. They did not have, uh, sometimes we had to push training one hour backwards because the clothes they used in the morning, had not dried up when they washed it for the afternoon. Now, I was being unpaid, and this is my country. Everything was being done to strike for me. There were two things to do. I could either start saying, okay, since I'm being unpaid, I want to keep the job. And for any player to play for Super Eagles, you have to pay me something behind the back. And then I will continue coaching. That way I can survive myself financially. Or I could say, I don't want to be part of this facade. Keep your job since you don't want to help me to help my country. I will go away. Now, if somebody sees that I've been controversial, then I am controversial. Uh, if somebody sees the fact that um, as of today, all I've brought has been hard work, success, and dedication to my country, if you call that controversial, then I am controversial. If you refuse to be a corrupt person and you have your principles that you want to put God first and honesty first and you're controversial, then you should be controversial. Good, good, good answer. <laughs> I like you being controversial Sunday. Keep, keep it up. <laughs> I am afraid, my brother, not to say, not to say I like to be controversial. I didn't hear the trouble will come after. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody is asking you, uh, this is from Adenike, can you recommend a good football academy in Nigeria that combines academic studies and football training? Every academy, I don't know what they do, how they do it, but every academy could be good for your child. But there, is, there are certain um, things that have to be present for you to find it to be a good one for you. One, they must be teaching the kids how to get better on a daily basis. They must be making sure they force the kids or your, to make lots of repetitions because football is all about repetitions and mastery of the art. And they must provide a situation whereby the kids in the academy must constantly have competition. There is no progression without competition. If these three, uh, these three aspects, um, tools, or three sec sections of it are not in it, think twice. Think twice. Okay. Okay. How did you, this is from Tenuke, how did you decide on football as a career? Should we tell Tenuke to read the book? Yes, because um, it, 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 to be unfair, to be unfair, to uh, please, it's it, it's it's all in the book and in in a more in a more detailed way. So, okay. By the way, the book is available with Latana, eight thousand five hundred naira copy. I will encourage everybody here. Let's send a message to every other sports star in Nigeria that if they write a book, we will read the book because one of the challenges is. You know, if I write the book, who is going to read it? You know, so let's all get copies of this. Get more than a copy. Latana has copies and they are ready to sell. Or it can be delivered to you wherever you are. You can walk into the Latana shop to pick it up. Okay. Um, I don't think you want to answer this one. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you want to answer this one. <laughs> In the present Super Eagles team, who is, the, who is the weakest link? No, you don't want to answer that. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. <laughs> Felix is asking you, how do you advise a boy or a girl aspiring to play football internationally while presently at the local home country? Well, the, the first advice I have to give 
the boy or girl wants to play internationally is that you have to make sure that uh, you strive to be the best in wherever you are. Try to be the best. If you're the best at anything, you always succeed. You have to be the best. Now, one basic aspect the child has to look at is that the power to imitate. It is by, you have to imitate what people who are playing in their position is doing, uh, are doing, and try to imitate them and better it. That is the only way. But then again, you just like in my case, as you will see from the book, you need some divine help because somebody has to discover you. I was fortunate that somebody discovered me in a miraculous way. Otherwise, all this would not have happened. So. Hmm, thank you. Um, let me see. I think we can take one more question before we somebody somebody admired. Let me see that question. I wanted I noted it down. He said that um uh sorry about this. I'm looking for that question. I found it very interesting and I missed it. Uh yeah, I saw but this is by John. John said, I saw him, I saw him Sunday combine academics and curricular effectively. I picked I, I picked sports because of people like him back then in Festac Town. Oh yeah, that's true. He's not lying. He's <laughs> not lying because um, uh, I grew up in Festac and that was really when they had shifts of combining both. Because we used to go, we used to, go to play at 721 Road as a football pitch there. So, yeah. so we have to also, during the exams, you don't go to play. So, <laughs> so, so I think that person really knows us. <laughs> great, 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 great. So um, I guess because of time, this is where we have to draw the curtain um, this afternoon. Um, thank you for all the questions that have come in. Thank you, Sunday, for the insights into your book. And thank you once again, I will keep repeating it, for blazing the trail to write this book. Uh, it's such a gift. I was saying on my program last week that, you know, books are very powerful. Yeah. Long after Sunday Ulysses is gone, the audacity to refuse will remain, you know, and people will keep reading it and people will keep reading it and people will keep referencing it long after. So books are really powerful. And many people that, that you will never meet physically, in your lifetime, they will meet you through the book. You know, they will read your story and all that. So thank you for this gift of your book. And this is where we draw the curtain. It's been a pleasure. Um, my name is Kunle Kasumo, and this is Sunday Olise, my friend, <laughs> super, ex Super Eagle star. I'll hand over back to Mrs. Morgan. I don't know if Pastor Morgan is around. He usually does us the honor. I am. I am here. Ah, welcome, sir. Okay. All right. Do I go ahead? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, a happy Children's Day to us all. Uh, my dear Aburo, Uncle Kunle, thank you so much for what you do. Thank we you. just appreciate you. We bless the Lord for your life. Amen. And we pray that we'll continue to honor and reward you greatly in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> My brother, Sunday Olise. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? You uh, professor I mean, yesterday. Oh, uh. <laughs> I beg no reveal, no reveal, no, no reveal. I, I tell you yesterday, and I tell Kule to the results. You don't agree. You told me that that coach is dangerous. <laughs> no, I don't no I tell you, Zona, I go lose yesterday, but no verse. <laughs> you talk up, you talk up, you talk up all our prayer. Eh? <laughs> well, thank you so much for what you have done today. I mean, not just what you've done today, but, you know, the ability to really sit down and capture all that you have in here. It's been a real blessing. Um, and essentially the story of your life, you know, and uh, like you said, just a refusal to accept limitations. That's one thing that came across, you know, very, very clearly. And I think that's just a very, very important place to be because it is God that has created us. The Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus of the good works. So that's what it is. We must have that understanding irrespective of whatever, you know, space we are playing at. And um, 
you know, thanks for communicating this. Thanks for capturing this. You know, I, I love the mention of God. I'm in our conference room and um, the young man, Frank, you know, who is handling the uh, platform. Yes, he's just bringing God into everything. Just bringing God into <laughs> I don't get choice, so not, not my godfather. <laughs> Fantastic. Appreciate it, sir. But it, it's, and, and of course, the mention of family. I mean, family is very, very important to me, and the role of your parents and even your grandparents. My first review of the book, you know, I, I, that came across very, very clearly. And we thank God for our elders. We thank God for the values. I mean, there are a lot of things we can say about Nigeria and Africa, but um, respect for elders and uh, the role that they play in our lives is so, so uh, important. I think there's a book I read at the time. It says, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. You know, so it's just your parents. Yeah. <laughs> in those days, you were offended. On the way back, some of the neighbors would have dealt with you. <laughs> before you <even> got to... <laughs> and it's not bad for us. It has really, really helped us. Unlike living abroad, I'm sure in uh, Brussels and some of those places, you don't know who your neighbor is. You might not greet the person. Maybe on Christmas Day, you can grudgingly greet the person. <laughs> okay, Christmas. And they might not even answer you. You know, so we thank God for that. The role of family, the role of God, and um, just interesting. And just interesting, you know, your, your sojourn, different nations, Belgium, Holland, Germany. Uh, what has happened is, I, I think TV today and uh, DSTV has brought football much closer to us here in Nigeria. And a lot of people follow different leagues. So, you know, when you're putting, talking about these things, we can actually put it in context in what it is that we are exposed to now. Uh, but it, it's, it's great what it is that you have communicated. We all used to admire you in those days, you know, just chill, just correct, you know, looking sharp all the time. And uh, those passes just really, really wonderful. There was something else you shared with me yesterday that uh, Ole, Gunnar Sosha, our manager, you know, was your classmate when you guys were in coaching school in London and that he was always very chilled and you prophesied that that guy go out fuck some. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I told you that on our platform, man, you platform. No, it was as if someone died though, yesterday. I'm telling you, everybody <laughs> so, so sober, so, so sober. <laughs> because that's where the boys played well, da, da, da. You know, we scored 11, 10 goals. It was the 11th goal. Now the here at Kosamo, uh, he has to support the Spanish team. I mean, all my of commentary. And I think one of the guys, is, I saw uh, Pastor Deji, he's, he's on here as well. Oh, he has left now. Okay, yeah. But, you know, we had a lot of uh, very interesting conversation uh, <laughs> yesterday. So thanks so much for being a blessing. I want to appreciate everyone that has joined the program today, all our participants. I note that there are quite a number of our uh, former book reviewers that are here. Pastor Benga, God bless you. Thanks so much. Pastor Femi Edu, um, Pastor Nana Odete, and everybody else that, you know, has joined us today. It's been a real blessing, you know, just, just listening to our brother. Uh, we thank God for your life. Um, I want to thank our team here. Uh, um, Russ Sunday, it was my wife that got me to talk to you. She's the one that drives this thing. Oh. <laughs> Do you she, a, does it well. she does it well. Yeah, no, she does it. I, I got to give it to her. So we thank God. Uh, you know, says Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. That I'll find you a help. So there's a no. <laughs> that's scripture. that's scripture. So any man that does not permit his wife, is, I mean, you're creating problems for yourself. You're really shortchanging yourself. So we thank God for what she's doing, and of course the Laterna team as well. Everyone had been looking forward to this, and um, you know, we thank God that it has, you know, really come to pass. You know, I, I like what it was, your last chapter, chapter 20. You know, it's all about the audacity to refuse. You make reference to Michael Jackson and his refusal to accept limitations. And then, you know, on page 347 it says, as a human being coming from the most blessed and black populated nation on earth, Nigeria, in a world where injustice is rampant, being audacious enough to refuse what is wrong is painfully expensive. You found it, you know, um, with the refusal to be a corrupt and bad leader, leader sabotage, <laughs> beloved uh, super green eagles, uh, refusal to accept racism and this, refusal to turn your back on your national team, affected, you know, your impacted relationship with your coach and all of that. They say, however, my journey fueled by an audacious refusal to accept the bad and instead, instead accept the good with open arms and in fear of God has blessed me with the greatest things I could ever have wished for as a human being. Of course, your family, 
you know, your success in the World Cup and recognition and the honor that is associated with your name because nobody hears Sunday Ulisse and thinks of it in a disparaging uh, way at all. And I thank God that, you know, your family has been esteemed as a result of the values and the decisions that you have taken. And um, we thank God for your life. I don't know, um, Nigeria, when you attain fame like this, I, mean, I think it was George Weir that became the president of Liberia. I don't know. Are we ready for that in Nigeria? No. Are we ready? We're, no. we're not ready. You can tell no. us. No, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill you. <laughs> oh, Nigeria. Uh, God will help. God has to help. God has to help. You know, so much gifted, so much talent. You must alive it all and rise at, 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 at the same places. Huh? Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, PYM is saying I should mention, you know, the contents page, you know, all about the Africa Cup of Nations, FIFA World Cup, you know, Atlanta, you know, back to Amsterdam. I mean, we had the privilege to watch all those. Next session, when it takes place, is going to be a continuation of this book that we had read or we had reviewed. It was reviewed by um, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Umwani. Uh, she had started it and she didn't have enough time to go through. So we appealed to her to come and do a second uh, part. So she's going to be doing the second part. And of course, we'll communicate uh, that to you. That was brilliant. You know, uh, John Maxwell's, one of his latest books, and the leader's greatest return, which is what? Attracting, developing, and multiplying leaders. So um, please uh, look out for this and, you know, ensure to join. And yes, like uh, Uncle Kuli has said, we have copies of the book available Excellent quality, excellent quality. I mean, it was done, you know, so, so well. And uh, like you had mentioned, there are quite a number of pictures in here and, um, you know, an excellent read. So please uh, get in touch and pick up your copies and be blessed as you do so. Uh, once again, thank you so much for your time. Um, today, uh, we're here as well. I mean, even there's a children's program running concurrently, um, a book reading session, um, Mrs. Um, Onyeka Owenu is actually, you know, taking that right now, you know, oh. in another, yeah, yeah, yeah. This so, is another tour for me. Okay, I will, I will say that, I will say that, I will say that, yeah, uh, she's almost done, so I'll just catch her before she leaves, huh? So, Sonny, thank you so much, huh? Okay, my uh, brother. Great, really great, really great to have you, huh? And for...